Everybody knows that Honda automatic transmissions have never been their strong point, but this one might actually be an exception. This is a 5-speed automatic transmission out of a 2012 Honda Fit. Now while the flu that came out of this thing was definitely used, this car had 285,000 kilometers on it, and surprisingly it's one of Honda's most reliable automatic transmissions. The Honda transmissions are basically automated manual transmission, and right on top here you can see the solenoids that are going to control the clutches that engage and disengage those gears. This is a bit old school, so we do have a dipstick, which I like to see around the back here we have an inline filter which is pretty easy to access you don't have to drop the pan we do have speed sensors of course an open differential here with the axle sticking out and the park neutral switch and around the front here we do have a very simple torque converter and the inside one here is the input shaft and the outside is the stator for the torque converter let me see if this passenger side axle will pop out there. Pretty simple. So my bets are I can get this transmission apart with 10s, 12s, and 14s. And of course my angle grinder, because lots of these are pretty rusty. Well, I lied. That union bolt is a 17. Pull this line off on this side. Got my first strip bolt already on this line bracket. So I'm going to put your safety glasses on, because these camera lenses are pretty expensive. Now checking the transmission fluid on Hondas are a bit different. You don't have to have the engine running and in park. This you have to check it when the vehicle is off. You always gotta make sure that this vent tube is free and clear, which it clearly is not, because the transmission is gonna build up pressure in here and it could blow out the seal. I'm gonna remove this bracket for it. And that gives us clear access to these solenoids. And I got my grandfather's toothbrush again, because it's super crusty inside of here. And I'm gonna clean this area out so I don't strip these bolts. So, and here is the transmission solenoid. There's two lines here that have little screens in them. Pry this one up. Let's get the back cover off. These are all 10s. I'm going to remove this park neutral switch. So here's a look at the back cover. You can see we've got these tubes here and there's galleys that run along the inside here. That's going to take fluid across these tubes here that come from the casing from the valve body. We've also got bearings inside of here and over here. And of course there's pressure switches so the computer knows exactly what gear you're in basically. All right, cool. There's gears and they all rotate. So this is probably where we've got our primary, secondary and tertiary shafts inside of here, just like a manual transmission. And then we have this cog over here that has these slits for this parking Paul to lock in there. Let's see if I can remove this bolt. Okay. Mechanism with the parking paw lever and that's the tooth that's going to lock in here. Now that parking paw shaft goes over to the other side where the shifter hooks up. So over on the front here this is where the shift cable would attach to. Pull this bracket off. Alright so I've turned the transmission upright and I need to unstake these nuts. Alright two of these nuts are 34 millimeter. Let's see if I can bust them free. I don't know if they're right handed thread though. All right, now I'm going to start using my gear puller to see if I can get these off. All right, I got the proper pulley puller on there. This one's a little trickster because it's got a little circlip in here. Got a whole set of these circlip pliers from the United States of America. So easy. I tried and tried and I can't get this gear to come off. So let's skip forward and take off all the 14 millimeter bolts going around the bell housing. I'm going to get this housing off. It appears to be hollow. Oh, this is actually the housing for the wires that come through here. Solenoids are held in with 10 millimeters. There we go. And if I remember correctly, this is your reverse idler gear. You gotta take this out, otherwise the casing won't come off. So once you pop this bushing out, this gear is supposed to come back. Okay. Finally got that case off. All right, it's the next day. Don't worry, nothing happened. And here is the workings of the Honda automatic transmission. As you can see, it looks very similar to a manual transmission. There's no planetary gear sets. Essentially, we have the input shaft here that comes from the bell housing. You have gears five and gears four on it. Then there is a secondary shaft or the counter shaft that actually drives this final drive. There's no clutches on it. Now my final drive kind of got stuck in the housing here when I was taking the case apart. I can't get it unstuck. Now over on this shaft here, we have gears one, two, and three, and they also drive their respective gears on the counter shaft. Now there's no physical engagement or disengagement of gears, synchros, or forks like in a manual transmission. Essentially, they're using a hydraulic clutch like in a normal automatic to engage this gear to the center shaft. So for example, in fifth gear here, we have power that's coming from the input shaft, 
Over here, hydraulic fluid is fed through these tubes. There's multiple of them that fell out when I took off the casing. Down through here into the clutch to lock it up. That's going to lock up the shaft to this gear over here and therefore transfer torque over to this counter shaft. Now all the gears are meshed at the same time. However, the ones with clutches on them are freewheeling on the shaft until the clutch actually locks up for it to transfer torque. Now the exception to that is the reverse gear, which is a straight cut gear that sits inside the transmission casing. It's going to engage with a small gear on the input shaft and a medium sized gear on the output shaft and is manually engaged using a fork that's hydraulically actuated. So when I pull this up here, you can see it's locked in there and that's going to engage these two by having an extra gear in between it reverses the direction now when you want to switch to another gear this releases pressure oh this makes squirting sounds i like that and that's going to cause this to freewheel and then you can engage other clutches to go in other gears now when you reverse the honda with this type transmission it makes a distinct whirring sound like a manual transmission and that's because it uses the straight cut kind of gear now all the other gears use a spiral cut gear to reduce that noise now at the bottom of the transmission we have this filter this is the real filter you can see it's going to suck up fluid at the bottom here that inline filter is basically an addition on the outside but it does help you really have to tear down the transmission to this much in order to change this filter i'm going to go ahead and use the correct socket i can pull off this filter Oh, it smells like cat piss in there. That's where that smell is coming from. I thought a cat had peed outside my garage door. So the filter is made of plastic. I don't see any particles in there. This was a working vehicle. But if you're really rebuilding this transmission, make sure you change this out. So here's the Prindle selector. Now the only thing that really matters in this transmission is park. And that's to engage that parking pole that we saw on the back side. The rest of this is just detent so you have a nice feeling when you're shifting your gear through the shift selector. There's also this hydraulic piston here that moves in and out. And that's the direct fluid pressure inside of the valve bar depending on what gear you're in. I'm going to start disassembling this reverse gear, this reverse gear fork, simple bearing inside of there. I'm sure there's a bunch of bearings on here. All right, so the valve body is actually underneath these gears, so it's very not serviceable. Let me see if I can pop off some of these gears here and move the reverse. Okay. Here we move the shaft. This gear set here, and then here's one and two. Take them all together. So we got the final drive left here. I'm going to remove the splash plate. And now I can finally remove the final drive. And here we have the rest of the transmission casing and the valve body. All this fluid here definitely used and it smells like cat piss. It's so bad in here. Now I can remove this shaft here, the selector shaft. And here you can see there are things like pipes coming out of the valve body. All right, there's a bunch of 10s and 12s that hold this thing together as well as hold it down to the case. So I'm just going to remove everything I see. This giant spring here looks like a torque damper for the stator that's on the other side. Start removing stuff. There's pipes. All right, looks like we're taking this piece off first. That's the one with the spring. And then we can take this arm off, which is the stator itself that plugs into the torque converter. Interestingly, it's built in with a little bit of dampening. And then I can take this top piece off here. There we go. Now the torque converter spins with the engine and that's got the spline on it that splines to the transmission oil pump inside the valve body. It's just a simple gear pump. You can see the housing for it over here as it spins around and creates fluid flow and then sends it to the various channels and valves in order to control the transmission. Remember the input shaft itself actually plugs into the torque converter. I gotta say the valve body in every automatic transmission I open is just a work of art and a work of manufacturing. You can imagine all the machine work and all the tolerances that have to go into this to make this work. Now inside of here we have what's called accumulators. There are little cylinders that hold hydraulic pressure so that when you're going to the next shift you've got enough pressure to smoothly shift into that gear and engage that clutch. Now if I take out the oil pump gear, we've got a giant plate over here and of course more transmission fluid. There's these little dowels that are coming out. Some of these have steel balls. Look, there's a spring over here. You really gotta know if you're rebuilding this where things go. Don't worry tree huggers, there is a pan down below. I wouldn't want oil all over my garage floor. Although it does happen from time to time. Why should I pay for expensive pigment when I got my brother's boxers straight out of the laundry? I'll just go ahead and clean up this table. I think this guy had a little too much peanut butter and bagel. But hey, at least it works. It's not gonna smell like cat pee anymore. 
So now that we've got everything apart, let's take a look at how the gear changes work because arguably that's the most cool thing about these Honda automatics. First, let's establish that the input shaft, which is this red one here, is the primary shaft. Then we've got the counter shaft. This green one here spins the final drive, which spins the wheel. And then we have our secondary shaft here. Now, if you remember on the back of the transmission casing, there's a gear going from the input shaft to this counter gear over here. And then that goes to the secondary shaft. You'll also note that there is a gear reduction on this shaft over here. So that's going to change the speed of this one. It's not a one to one ratio. So now we know power is coming from the input and being transferred externally through the transmission casing over to this secondary shaft here. Now for third gear here, we've got the input coming in through here. It goes through the transmission casing. Now remember there is a gear reduction over there and then into the secondary shaft. Now the secondary shaft has the third gear here, which is going to lock up this gear to this one over here. Now remember this gear does look bigger than this one, but we have that external gear reduction so that gives you an underdrive gear ratio on third and that's going to go out and spin the output first and second gear are very similar we've got the inputs coming in through here across the casing into this secondary shaft second gear which is this clutch here is a little bit smaller and that's going to spin a larger gear and first gear has a much smaller gear that spins a much larger gear for a multiplication of torque when you want to take off from a stop and those are going to spin the output respectively. As we explained before, the shifter fork sits between here to select the reverse gear. Now if we do move it into reverse gear mode, that's going to lock this straight cut gear here to give you a reverse with that counter gear that sat between here. However, in reverse, this gear is freewheeling. Now you have to shift it back out of reverse like that in order to get your fifth gear and your third gear work because it uses the same gear. So you can really see how they've nestled everything together for a very small, compact, transversely mounted front wheel drive car configuration. In fact, on the Honda hybrids, they've added a fourth shaft to make it even smaller to fit the integrated motor assist. So you might want to check out that teardown that I did linked above. All right, I'm going to take this apart so we can take a quick look at how the clutch setup works. So we'll just pop this off here. So look at Inside of a clutch pack, you can see that there's these yellowish kind of teeth here. That's for the friction material that sits inside of there. That's going to latch onto these inside teeth here on the gear itself, just like that. And you can see how that's going to freewheel on the shaft. However, on the inside here, we do have this collar that has teeth and that's actually splined to the housing over here. And if you look closely inside of there, you'll see there's little holes. That's going to send hydraulic pressure to lock up the outside here with these inside teeth. And once they're locked together, the input, which is from the shaft, is going to be locked to the output, which is the gear that plugs into here, and then they can rotate. So this is the second and third gear clutch. Let's take a quick look at its condition. It's actually not too bad. Now how these clutches work is that they've got these friction discs and then they've got these steel bands. So the steel bands are splined to the outside of this casing over here and the clutches are splined on the inside here to the physical gear that you're gonna switch into. Now when this piston over here pops out, it's going to apply hydraulic pressure and squeeze all of these together so they rotate as one assembly and therefore this gear engages. And the clutches inside of here don't look to be in terrible shape. However, they are a bit dark. They should be a little bit lighter like the teeth themselves, but this did have 285K on it. And here's a look at that piston. Of course, behind there, there's gonna be a seal and this is gonna pop forward. Let's take a look at the other side here. Once again, very similar condition. The clutches are dark, but they're not worn through. And there is a good amount of oil on here. And that's a look at the Honda automatic transmission and how it works. Now, if you want to see a video on how the L15 engine that was attached to this Honda Fit works, make sure you check out that teardown link above. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more teardowns just like this one.